This video is the second video on human reproduction and it specifically deals with the male reproductive system. You must be able to draw and label a really good diagram of the male reproductive system similar to this with all of these key labels. I think it's easier if you're going to practice drawing to draw it from the front like I have here, but be mindful that a lot of the diagrams in the exam papers feature side on views. So be mindful of that and make sure you can recognize the key features from the side as well. So we're just going to examine the key features of the male reproductive system and we'll begin with the testes. So there are two testes, but one of them is a testis. And this is where the male gamete, the sperm, are produced. They're produced in the testes and it's also where testosterone, the male hormone, is produced. So the testes have an endocrine function also. So you know that the sperm are produced in the testes. That's an important statement. Always state that. But where in the testes? Let's just take a look at that. So the testes are made up of these seminiferous tubules and there are diploid cells lining these tubules. And it's these diploid cells that undergo meiosis. Very important that you state meiosis to produce sperm. Sitting on top of the testes is the epididymis. And it's in this structure where the sperm are stored and where they mature. So once the sperm have matured in the epididymis, they're released from it and enter into the sperm duct. So the testes are located or found in the scrotum, these two sac-like structures, skin structures, which hold the testes and keep them at 35 degrees Celsius or thereabouts. So they keep them at a temperature that's optimal for meiosis. So they must be at a temperature that's lower than body temperature so that they can produce those sperm. When the sperm are mature, they leave the epididymis and they enter into these two tubes, one leading from each testis. And these are known as the sperm ducts or the vas deferens. And they're basically just the tubes in which the sperm travel. The seminal vesicles are a pair of glands that feed into each sperm duct. They produce a liquid known as seminal fluid. And this liquid contains the sugar fructose, which nourishes the sperm. Really important. The fluid is alkaline and the seminal vesicles produce most of the liquid found in semen or that makes up semen. Semen is the combination of the liquid and the sperm. So both sperm ducts will merge together, so they'll join together and form the urethra. And sitting on top of this is the prostate. The prostate produces more fluid or more liquid, and this combines with that produced by the seminal vesicles. So then we have Cowper's glands. These are two small glands that produce fluid that is added to the secretions of the seminal vesicles and the prostate gland. So you should be able to recall all of the glands that produce the seminal fluid. So first we had the seminal vesicles, they produce most of it. Then we had the prostate gland and then we had Cowper's gland. So what's the purpose of this seminal fluid? Well, firstly, it acts as a medium for the sperm to swim in. It's a source of nourishment because it contains fructose. And very important, it's alkaline. And this is going to neutralize the acidic environment of the vagina. If this didn't happen, the sperm could not survive. The penis introduces sperm into the female reproductive system. It becomes erect due to an increase in blood flow and it's out through the urethra that sperm and seminal fluid flow when they are released. It's important that you do pay attention to the hormones, particularly the male hormones, which are often overlooked. Testosterone is produced by the testes. It's responsible for the secondary sexual characteristics in males at puberty. And these secondary sexual characteristics are defined as those features, apart from the sex organs, that distinguish between the sexes. And examples would be the voice deepens, there's a growth spurt, pubic hair grows, there's an increase in muscle mass, and there's an increase in the production of sebum in the skin. So there are two hormones associated with the onset of puberty in males. The first is follicle stimulating hormone produced in the pituitary gland. It travels in the blood to the testes where it stimulates those cells in the testes to divide by meiosis and produce sperm. Then there's luteinizing hormone also produced by the pituitary gland. It travels in the blood to the testes where it stimulates them to produce testosterone. So in puberty, a lot more testosterone is suddenly produced under the influence of luteinizing hormone. It's important that you can draw and label the sperm. It's made up of three sections. The head contains the nucleus and it also at the front contains this area known as the acrosome, which contains enzymes which are going to dissolve the coating of the female egg so that the sperm can enter. Then you have the midsection and it's here that you'd find many mitochondria. Those mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. They're going to provide all of the energy that's going to help that tail move. 
So at the end of this video, what should I know? We'll be able to draw and label the male reproductive system, know how and where sperm are produced, know the purpose of seminal fluid, know the glands which secrete the seminal fluid, know where follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone are produced, where they go and what they do. Know the role of testosterone and where it's produced and be able to define those secondary sexual characteristics and give examples and draw and label a sperm. So the best of luck with all of the revision. Check out the exam papers. I'm sure there's quite a few questions you could answer even at this stage. Best of luck.